just a quick video here today friends let me share something that I came across earlier this evening on the 15th of October it's Tuesday on Mossab Hassan Youssef's Twitter page he posted something as you can see I have it up there on the screen victory or death this short video took me back to 1987 when the first Palestinian Intifada up erupted History is repeating itself. Back then they destroyed my beautiful hometown Ramallah and now they are coming after my beloved country, the United States. The Intifada leaders have sacrificed both Arabs and Jews to globalize their infinite cause, hiding their lust for power behind the concept of Palestine. Instead of being prosecuted for their crimes, they have been legitimized and over and over again legitimacy has been given to this movement right if these delusional egomaniacs succeed in building enough momentum they will divide the west ignite civil wars and bring civilization down to ashes you would think Mossab would know he's lived it he's experienced it he's escaped it the same way they did in the West Bank, Gaza, Lebanon, Kuwait, Syria, Tunisia and Jordan. Wherever they go, they bring death and misery. Let me brighten up my screen. Before I show you the video, I'm going to show you the makers of this short but very important documentary by the Canary Mission. I'm going to read their mission statement and then after I've read this, I'm going to play the video and I want to make sure that I don't interrupt. So I'm going to play the whole video and then I'll end this stream. Canary Mission documents individuals and organizations that promote hatred of the USA, Israel and Jews on North American college campuses and beyond. Canary Mission investigates hatred across the entire political spectrum, including the far right, far left, and anti Israel activists. Canary Mission is motivated by a desire to combat the rise in anti Semitism on college campuses. We pursue our mission by presenting the words and deeds of individuals and organizations that engage in anti Semitism, racism, and bigotry on the far right, far left, and among the array of organizations that compromise or that compromise that comprise the anti-semitic boycott divestment sanctions the bds movement canary mission gathers content from publicly available sources additionally we collect and validate materials submitted privately through our website we aggregate this information into concise and easily searchable format providing free access to the general public before publication, all content is verified, meeting our high standards of accuracy and authenticity. When published, content is based on validated information submitted privately and note indicating this is placed on the page. The addition of individuals to our database is governed by our ethics policy. Individuals who believe that they should be removed from the Canary Mission website are encouraged to be are encouraged to be in touch with us and may become ex-canary. By shining a light on hate groups and their members, the public is better informed. And this is the whole purpose of me sharing this with you. The public is better informed about bigotry on their campuses and in the communities. Canary Mission believes that we all have the right to know if an individual has been affiliated with movements that routinely engage in anti-Semitic rhetoric and actions, promote hatred of Jews and seek the destruction of Israel. And my past videos, as you know, friends, I've been talking a lot about how, let me see if I can enlarge this. I'm going to have to play it like this because the way I've selected the screen selection on my screen recording. It's important that you see and listen to what's being said in this video for yourselves because I could watch it and give you my interpretation or my summary. But it's important that you listen to what's been said here. Let me play it. ...of the days to come. 
because they will not be easy. There are people among us today who might not be with us next year at this moment. And this is the reality. Because the liberation struggle requires sacrifice. And I know everyone here is prepared to make that sacrifice. In May 2024, over 100 organizations gathered for the People's Conference for Palestine in Detroit, Michigan. More than 3,000 activists were in attendance. Speakers celebrated the October 7th massacre, called for resistance against the West, and mapped out a vision for the destruction of America from within. The Palestinians who came to the United States understood their role immediately upon arrival. For me, the movement for Palestine in North America and across the world are here to fight until victory. This violent movement has been growing for decades. It's made up of groups including Within Our Lifetime, Students for Justice in Palestine, the Palestinian Youth Movement, and many others. After the October 7th attacks, anti-Israel groups in America were emboldened. They saw the massacre as an opportunity to intensify hostility toward Jews and America. As the movement worked non-stop to legitimize the Hamas attack, the activists openly flaunted their hatred of Jews and Israel through protests, vandalism, encampments, and violent assaults, both in the streets and on college campuses. Flags of terror organizations became commonplace in public spaces. Activists celebrated the brutality of the October 7th massacre, drawing inspiration from the barbaric acts of terrorism. Our martyrs are heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice. Hamas, a job well done. On October 7th, Hamas declared war on Israel. On October 8th, their supporters declared war on America. The goal of the movement is not just to destroy Israel. Their primary target is the U.S. They call America the enemy, the beast, or simply empire. We're in the belly of the beast. We are in the heart of U.S. empire. We are here, in the belly of the insatiable imperial beast. Here in North America, in the U.S., the belly of the beast, the heart of empire. We have to bring down this empire with one million cuts. We will be hitting empire where it hurts most. Bring empire to its knees. Dismantling the heart of empire is not easy, and it won't be rapid. But we know it's possible. This panel, y'all, is talking about what is next to strike at the heart of empire. The Palestinian American pro-terror movement uses the word resistance as a euphemism for violence. And that resistance is to be accomplished by any means necessary. We will resist by any, by any, by any, all means necessary, all means necessary. The resistance in all its forms resistance including armed resistance normalized armed struggle they are not terrorists they are freedom fighters our noble steadfast resistance conference speakers outlined their strategy for bringing the war home i believe our fundamental role is to generate political and social crisis within the american ruling class mass mobilization is the primary tactic street shutdowns bridge and train shutdowns airport caravans and shutdowns encampments building takeovers targeting of weapons manufacturers shutting down events we will be here in the streets on our campuses in our classrooms in our workplaces every day we have made the situation untenable for the empire's ruling classes and the political establishment they have created a disruptive movement made up of students and faculty 
turning young minds into anti-American extremists. Our movement has helped transform students into revolutionaries! Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, and other factions that fight American hegemony in the region. People who are 18 and 19 years old on, on campuses truly understand these ideas now. Protesters target cultural and historical landmarks, seeking to destabilize the foundations of American society. They are openly hostile to law enforcement and engage in violent opposition toward the police. <laughs> The influence of these organizations isn't limited to universities and public spaces. They've even reached the halls of Congress. Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib. We're going to move Congress, and we're going to move the White House. We're not going anywhere. Free, free, Palestine! The influence of these violent groups is growing, and they are working towards their goal of dismantling America. Our struggle is a long struggle, and one that stands on the shoulders of thousands of martyrs and thousands of fighters who have committed and who are committing their lives to lay the ground for the revolution we see ahead of us today. Gaza tells us to escalate for it. That can mean so many different things, but what I will tell you is we need to start sacrificing. The threat of violence is not theoretical. In this war of resistance, all Americans are potential targets. These organizations are determined to achieve their revolution, whatever the cost, by any means necessary. By any means necessary. If the enemy refuses that you die, it must be killed. There is only one solution! The Palestinian diaspora in North America has committed its martyrs for this cause. Students have brought the war home. It is either victory or death. Either victory or death. They're losing their ability to control us. And this means that now the gloves are off. And quite frankly, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So I will give you a brief summary. What are they saying they're willing to do? Victory or death, right? Any means necessary, by all means necessary. It's time for sacrifice. These are people who are willing to do and commit the same atrocities that we expect from Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda and the like in the USA and they're willing to do it I'm going to end the video because I've got more to share stay tuned friends I'm working on several videos I said I was going to do them in several parts because there's a lot of information I want to share it's regarding the Israel lobby versus the Arab lobby and the other one I'm doing is regarding the Noahide laws versus the Sharia law so I'll be back soon. Please make sure to give a thumbs up to this video, like it, subscribe if you haven't, and please leave a feedback in the comment section.